Hello everyone and welcome to Bionadon's Mods. This is Otaku Showboat. With the release of Pi Alternative Energy has come a lot of changes to the rest of the Bionadon's Mods mod suite. So today we will be covering Tar. Tar. How has this changed? Tar processing is the main thing that has changed. You can now do multiple things with tar that uh, didn't exist prior to the release of Pi Alternative Energy. So it will be important to go over how we get tar as well as how we process tar today. So how do we how do we get tar in, in the first place? Well, at the very beginning of the game and for basically the entire game, you are able to make tar by processing raw coal uh, in destructive distillation columns. This destructive distillation is the primary way of making tar for the early game. It's the only way, really, in the early game of making tar. So what you do, you take your raw coal, you throw it into the destructive distillation column, it makes some byproducts, it also makes coal gas and tar, and it makes coal. This is how you will get coal in the very early game. The coal can then be further processed in destructive distillation columns uh, into more tar, more coal gas, more iron oxide byproduct, as well as coke. This is how you get coke to make steel in the early game. From there, you can take any excess coke that you produce and further throw it into a destructive distillation column to effectively get rid of it by converting it into ash as well as as well as additional tar and coal gas. Now the coal gas here we're not going to talk too much about, but you can convert it into syngas. You, you, you use it to mine aluminium. You can convert to syngas to mine various other items uh, in the game. Uh, it's needed to mine... Oh boy, it's needed to mine chromium. It's needed to mine a uh, few other things. Nickel uh, as well. Uh, but what we'll be interested in today is what do we do with this tar that we have made? Now, I will note that later in the game, you do get access to being able to tap into bitumen seeps. We will have a separate video covering bitumen seeps. You can refer to my older video on bitumen seeps, but I will note that it is a bit outdated at this point because the uh, density values... Uh, have been multiplied considerably on bitumen seeps. So what I will say about them is that when you are able to place tar extractors down and you are able to feed drilling fluid into those bitumen seeps to make tar nodes, uh, without running resource spawner overhaul, you will have one node at a time that spawns on the map, and that one node will be able to provide you at mark one with 100 items per second of fluid of tar. 100 per node that you find that you decide to make tar out of, and that can be adjusted by modules. That will be adjusted by increasing mark level of building as you go along as well, by increasing the crafting speed, etc., etc. Tar, no matter how you get it, can get processed into various other things. Now, you can use tar as tar. You can convert tar into tailings for Nexalit. That is, that is one way that you can do it through tar quenching. Uh, this is a recipe that has changed as well. Uh, previously, you had two options for this recipe, and both... Each one would result in an output of a couple of different ores, either iron and copper, I think, and then the other one was like borax and niobium or some weird, weird combinations. And now it doesn't actually output ore directly, it outputs some soot that you can then sort into certain ores. Uh, but the main thing here is that it is one-to-one -one tar into tailings, and this is now 
one of, if not the only real way of getting into tailings for making your first Nexalit. But we'll have another video talking about Nexalit as well. I just wanted to note that we can convert tar into tailings and saline water and flue gas through tar quenching. But now what we're really going to be looking at today is up here at this process right up here. Yeah, this thing. This thing. So what I have here is a build that is processing 500 tar per second into various products. Of course, early in the game, you will definitely not be doing this at this scale. You will have to do a process like this, but not to such a degree as how I have done at this phase of the game. I also have like two or three of this build at this point. So just scattered around the base, Multi multiple copies. And yet again, I've done this weird thing of like pasting down these random insatas everywhere. So what do we do? here what, are, what what is this what is this mess of stuff of buildings well the tar processing unit of course is the place where we will process our tar step one involves taking steam in and and tar in and producing pitch creosote anthracene oil and middle oil you get four fluid products from your tar in the initial step of tar processing. Each of these does something. Of course, creosote you will want to use as creosote. That, that is a quote-unquote end product that you will want to deal with and use. Pitch can be further processed, as can middle oil. Anthracene is also an end product that you will uh, use for other purposes. Anthracene oil is used in the production of carbon black for rubber. Uh, it is also involved in the production of anthraquinone, but that happens much later. There is an alternative method that is available earlier that you will have to do that will involve naphthalene oil as well as vanadium pentoxide this comes first yes it's painful this other recipe is going to be the one that you use in the long term into the end of the game but just keep in mind anthracene will be used then as well as earlier with rubber Creosote, of course, has its uses to make sand castings. It makes treated wood. You need, you need to make treated wood to make your circuits. It's involved in the production of fiberboard. Um, yeah, you need, you need a lot of uh, stuff. You, need, you, can, you can use it to make power poles as well. It's rather convenient. It's convenient. Yeah, it's used in a Formica recipe the initial Formica recipe that you have access to at the beginning of the game for making PCB1 for making Circuit 1. From here, you can process your middle oil and your pitch. This is pitch processing. Pitch processing takes pitch and steam in and produces quite a bit of coke for the amount of pitch that you throw in. It produces a little bit of hydrogen, as well as light oil, naphthalene oil, and more anthracene oil. I will note that the amount of coke that is produced from the pitch here is not enough to supply the steam for these processes. It is, it is not enough to provide enough steam to keep everything moving. You will need to supplement the steam if you are also doing middle oil processing. Middle oil processing takes in steam and middle oil and produces light oil, 
carbolic oil, and naphthalene oil. So now we have two things making naphthalene oil, and one thing making carbolic oil, and two things making anthracene oil. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit much, isn't it? It's a bit much. There's lots of fluids involved here in this process, and as I mentioned, all these processes eating up steam together will not produce enough steam from the coke provided uh, to keep the system constantly flowing. You will need to supplement the steam in whatever way, shape, or form you decide to supplement the steam in. Uh, early in the game, you only really have access to regular boilers to do so. I am at a point in the game where electric boilers are a more efficient option than burning solid fuels uh, in regular boilers. This is a, mu a much more efficient process to use solid fuels to make power through coal power plants and then use the power to make steam in electric boilers. That at this point in the game, this doing this is more efficient. So, you have to also deal with uh, prioritization of usage of these things. Yeah, that's, that's totally a thing. Totally a thing. Having to prioritize usage of the various things. I've done this through uh, a somewhat creative use of uh, pumps on here. Uh, so basically, I've set the electric boilers to not pump into the tank, and I've set the line processing coke to pump the coke into the tank. Now, of course, all of this logistics has is simplified in this base because I am using a mod that allows me to stack items so each item on this belt is the equivalent of five items. You'll just have to use your imagination if you want to build at this scale uh, and uh, add in four additional belts for, uh, for everything. It's still the same number of buildings of uh, boilers to process, though the fuel value that you have to deal with does not change. But still 90-something boilers to uh, deal with that output is just rather than have five belts of the output that I'd have to deal with, uh, I have just one. So from here, carbolic oil, naphthalene oil, what can we do? Light oil, what can we do? Well, up here, the light oil, as we've seen in the carrageen video, stone and carrageen video, Light oil can get processed into aromatics and gasoline, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking all of the light oil that gets produced in this system from pitch, and I am processing that into a bit of gasoline and a bit of aromatics. This is how you will initially get aromatics for mining zinc, because zinc has changed. Zinc now requires aromatics for mining. Now the gasoline is a fluid fuel of 1.2 megajoule fuel value. It is very, it is very, very useful to use it as a fluid fuel. You will use this fluid fuel with initial glass production you will use all of it. You will want as much of it as you can possibly get. Aromatics also has a fuel value, as does naphthalene uh, and carbolic oil and even the light oil in here and middle oil. <laughs> uh, a lot of this stuff has fuel value, uh, so you can, you can use it if you want as fluid fuels, uh, or you can get rid of the excess, which the intent is definitely... Uh, along the lines of getting rid of the excess. So what do we do with carbolic oil? That it, That is a great question. Well, carbolic oil can be used to create organic solvent once you unlock that recipe. Uh, you can combine naphthalene oil and carbolic oil to make organic solvent. This is the way that you will get 
uh, initial organic solvent uh, in the game. It is the one and only in the early game that you will use, and uh, it is quite useful uh, even in later phases of the game. You can also convert carbolic oil directly into additional creosote. So there is a possibility here for creating a factory that is converting tar primarily into creosote because naphthalene oil also can be used to create creosote. And we can see here that you can actually convert naphthalene oil into additional aromatics and coke at some point, as well as the, uh, needed for the anthroquinone recipe, uh, the initial anthroquinone recipe. So a few usage, usages for naphthalene oil more than that of carbolic oil. And we can actually make a dedicated creosote factory. And this is where I'll show Factory Planner for one of the first times. Uh, because Helmod had issues with this build uh, for showing this process. This is what you get when you process tar into primarily creosote out by taking in all of the naphthalene oil and all of the carbolic oil and adding to the initial creosote production. You are able to convert 500 fluid per second of tar into 369 creosote uh, by doing this process. It is not the greatest, I will say, but it is a way to get a primary creosote out. You will also end up with light oil that you could convert into aromatics and gasoline. You will also end up with a not insignificant amount of anthracene oil and a bit of hydrogen to do with what you will. This is one, and then the it process that we are, we are looking at right now through Helmod, I will bring up one of these. One of these things has it. One of these things, it's you. This is what we're looking at in this factory. We're looking at 70 coke getting reprocessed with a supplement of X more steam. But we are processing uh, the 500 tar into 215 aromatics, 107.5 gasoline, 75 carbolic oil, 290 naphthalene oil, 70 hydrogen, 585 anthracene oil, and 120 creosote with 14 per second of ash in excess that has to get deleted from the face of existence. That is the new way in which we have to process tar. And that is a process that you will do through the entire game with edits made only to the number of buildings as a result of upgrading their mark levels to uh, faster variants and for, and for modules, adding in speed modules. Of course, of course, I, I am using uh, Bob's modules on this save, uh, but of course none of these are productive processes. You will not, you will not get productivity on these buildings, uh, at least not currently not through modules, not through modules. With that, we have reached the end. That is, that is all I really have to say about this. You will, you will need a lot of tar. You will need a lot of tar based products through this process over time. A lot of them. So go out, make as much tar as you possibly can. You will have as much coal gas and sin gas as you could ever desire because you'll need way more tar than anything else. And you'll need to mine infinite amounts of raw coal in order to support that. Or you could do like I done and install resource spawner overhaul that gives you access to a few more bitumen seeps in each patch so you could actually mine decent amounts of tar from your fluid resource patches with them actually being you know patches of fluid resources rather than just one at a time with that i would i would like to thank you all for watching this has been a show but if you have enjoyed today's video please be sure to do all of the social and engagement stuff down below 
Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you have not yet subscribed and hit the notification bell. Consider becoming a member of the channel by hitting the great big blue join button and supporting on Patreon at patreon.com slash otakushobot if you are so inclined and able. I will see you all on the next one. Thank you.